Morning and thanks for joining us on Dialogue. Uh, this is a program that engages trending issues, um, issues of course that affect uh, the lives of uh, the citizens of the country, um, bordering on economy, governance, you know, security and so on. Uh, we look at all of these issues on a daily basis, perhaps with the uh, sole aim of uh, preparing solutions to some of these lingering problems uh, in our country, Nigeria. And one issue that has been trending and is still trending uh, is this issue of insecurity. Uh, the pervasive nature and the cascading nature of insecurity in Nigeria uh, has been a very worrisome situation. And, um, uh, you know, at various levels of governance, authorities are also, uh, I mean, finding solution to some of those uh, challenges. Uh, especially the issue of rural banditry, which has been ravaged in the north uh, western parts of the country, talking about the northwestern states of Zamfara, Katsina, Kaduna, you know, uh, Sukhothu, Niger, and the rest of them. Um, and of course, uh, looking at some of these uh, measures that are being taken by respective governments and the impact they are making uh, becomes imperative. Uh, so today we're focusing our searchlight on Zamfara State. Uh, Zamfara State is being regarded as the hotbed, if you like. Uh, or the epicenter of banditry, uh, perhaps because of the, uh, the impact that's made negatively in that state. Uh, hundreds, of, hundreds if not thousands of people have been killed, you know. Communities have been sacked. Economy is on the decline, you know. Uh, millions, billions of Naira in ransom have been paid, you know, to this rampaging bandits. And uh, uh, that's what makes it perhaps um, you know, the focus when we talk about banditry, uh, or ruler banditry in Nigeria. And I have today in the studio, Allah Dr. Sani Abdullahi Shinkapi, who is the Wamban Shinkapi, uh, and also a member of the Zamfara State Committee for finding lifestyle solution to the end banditry uh, in the studio right now, to talk about some of the interventions or efforts uh, that the state government is making to address this very serious challenge. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yes, uh, Alaji uh, Sani, yes, uh, the present administration of uh, Bella Matawale, you know, uh, took over a Zampara state that has been ravaged, you know, by this uh, banditry and so on. And uh, the expectation is that uh, we have a governor who is committed, uh, who is seen to be, you know, uh, proactive in addressing the problem. Uh, he came with several measures. I think um, among them is this issue of uh, dialogue, uh, perhaps with the bandits, you know, to get them, you know, drop their arms and then, uh, you know, so that there will be lasting peace. How has, Zim, how has this intervention of the government or strategy of the government yielded the, the desired result? Well, you see, <clears throat> the issue of uh, uh, unbanditry, uh has a historical beginning. Mm. The historical beginning of uh, rural, some people call it rural and banditry. Mm. It is started historically mm. problem of headsmen mm. and the palmers. Okay. Mm. Let me take you back mm. to the period of native, native authority, NA. Okay. The, the, the period of a uh, regime of uh, Sir Ahmed Bello, Sir Ronald Sokoto. Mm -hmm. There is this issue of uh, headsmen and palmers clashes. Mm -hmm. And that is why, well, that is how it started. Mm -hmm. From palmers and headsmen clashes, mm -hmm. from cattle rustling to unbanditry to mm -hmm. kidnapping. A word unbanditry. Mm -hmm. It is mean, a word, a literal meaning of what unbanditry mm. is a group of criminals mm. that ravage criminality mm. against the innocent people. That is a literal meaning of unbanditry. Right. <clears throat> so the, this historical uh, beginning of this whole unbanditry started during that time, mm. but to save guide mm. the escalation. Mm, yeah. To of, stop the escalation, right? Yes, to stop the to, to, to yes. stop the escalation mm. of the rural and banditry mm. for the past 50 years mm. and take you back to history mm. a, an act was enacted 
and gazetted yeah. in 1965. Mm. It calls Glazer Act, mm. 1965, mm. where it was clearly spelled out in that grazing act. Mm. Grazing reserve areas, mm. porous reserve, mm. game reserve. A twenty percent of the total land mass mm. was earmarked for cattle root, mm. grazing reserve, planning settlement, uh, game reserve, forest reserve. But since the advent of democracy in 1999 mm. in Zampara, mm. we started experiencing this issue of planning farmers clashes. Mm. Because some of this forest mm. or grazing reserve have been taken, taken over by farmers. Yeah, perhaps Take because to, of the rising number of population and uh, yes, you know the need for so 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 mm. there is a cattle route mm. from Zampara down to Cameroon, but now it's nowhere to be found. Mm. There is also a grazing reserve mm. because of the greed of the farmer. And the increase in the population density in Nigeria. Mm. You see a palmer will palm onto the main road. Mm. All these government reserve areas have been taken over mm. mostly by the traditional rulers mm. and people in the, in, the, in the authority of government. So like what started in Zampara? Mm. It is Ansado. Yeah. It started from Ansado where these forests were deprostrated. Most of this grazing reserve, mm. forest reserve, game reserves mm. were cleared and some planned settlement mm. were sacked. By who now? By the previous administration from 1999 mm. to 2019. Mm. That is from the Yerima administration to the administration in San Forest State. Mm. But during our committee report, we recommended mm. all those land allocated mm. to top politicians and traditional rulers should be revoked mm. by, by the government. governor. It's one of the remedy we recommended to the governor. Mm. And instantly, mm. the governor revoked all the allocation. So they the former governor of The former yes. governor of the state, mm. uh, was mm. the first person mm. to accept the revocation of that land. Mm. All the palm land allocated to he surrendered it mm. to the government. But still, some who are in the authority of power before mm. are still holding that land in their position. Okay, and, and this is meant for grazing reserves and so on. So they are meant for grazing reserve, forest reserve, mm. game reserves. But have been taken over. And even plan settlement and cut roots. Let me tell you something. Mm. In Gumi local government, there's one village they call Makaranta. That village Makaranta Pulani settled there for over 75 to 80 years ago. Mm. Mm. But in three days, the former government, the immediate first government, mm. wrote a letter mm. under the directors of government through the office of the Commissioner for Local Government Chapter Affairs, Local Government Chapter Service, mm. wrote a letter to Gumi Emery Council that a notice is mm. hereby sat to all the Pulani in that. Makaranta village mm. should live within three days to receive of that letter. Without an alternative or just no any alternative. Okay. And this NSAC the at low vigilante group mm. come and ransack them, take their animals, kill some of them. Mm. And after this government come back, mm. government says they have revoked all those things. Mm. And this plan now came back to take revenge and took over the position of their that's yeah, a story oh. mm. okay so if so I, this yeah. as well as some of the genesis okay. and the government is putting mm. trying to put a remedy to that mm. and that is why when this government came mm. on board they now said all the uh, this at law and circumstance group mm. which were recruited by the previous administration are hereby disbanded yes disbanded mm. and each emirate mm. that is five Hundred vigilante, mm. we have seventy emirates, mm. we have seventy emirs, and the, 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 the former government is spending fifteen thousand. And when this mm. a vigilante that was disbanded, yes. 
It's per person. Mm. When this vigilante was disbanded, mm. their then guns and their guns mm. have not been taken over from them. And their loyalty lies in the previous administration. And they're still holding these guns. Mm. And most of the problems still we're having, mm. it is this NSAK. But isn't that an indictment? Because if your government disbanded the NSAK, and without providing the, uh, you know, a clear roadmap of, of how they're going to accommodate them. These are trained you know, people. These are people who have been carrying arms and they have arms and they're in possession of arms. And there wasn't a, compre a comprehensive plan to integrate them in the society or to give them alternative jobs. Didn't you think that perhaps was the genesis or led to this uh, armed you know, conflict? Let me be say, let me, let, you see, I thank God when we're in doing house of program, some mm -hmm. person called, mm -hmm. that we should avoid politics in this. This is yes, what politicization, always, yeah. That is always what I want people to keep politics aside. Mm -hmm. The problem we're having on this disbanded at low vigilante growth, mm -hmm. popularly called NSAK, 75% of those who were recruited in that administration are current current members. Mm. of APC, APC. Mm. and their loyalty lies mm. on those people who recruited who are paying them mm. now that it was disbanded some of them mm. still are so adamant mm -hmm. they are not ready to comply with the directors and you know that Para has a very large vast land, yeah. vast land. Mm -hmm. we have a very big mm. uh, yeah. land mass yeah. right. so it is very difficult for even there, they have, there was a situation mm -hmm. where the, this NSAK mm -hmm. took over the traditional authority in some localities. Mm -hmm. Like in Modoma, one village called Modoma, no village head, no district head, no police station, no DSS. Mm -hmm. This at low NSAK mm -hmm. are those who are the, in the seat of the authority in that particular village. If you quarrel with your wife, they will go out of you there. They will find you. They will and charge it was you. happening under the previous administration? Under the, the previous of last administration. Hmm. So this is how we have planned ourselves. Hmm. We have planned ourselves. We are citizens of this country hmm. uh, at law. Hmm. And when the government hmm. refused to hmm. bring laws and order, to maintain laws and order, hmm. their citizenry will go at law. Hmm. And that is it. Okay. And yeah. all almost hmm. if you look at it, hmm. Because of the negligence of the former administration, mm. all of us for the local government with 147 electoral laws mm. are under siege of mm. bandit. It's on record. Mm. So, 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 in in a word, in a way, you're saying that part of the the state is was wasn't wasn't uh, I mean uh, was governed by. You know, not the not the state government now. It's being governed by the not the, now. The no, but nobody is telling you about now. Mm. The governor Matole is still is hundred percent in charge. Okay. Hundred percent in charge. Okay. Because so the, 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 the government yeah. Matole, people don't understand mm. the the alternative this resolution he came on board with. Mm. It's an experienced parliament. The dialogue option. Yeah. Yes, the dialogue option. It's an experienced parliament. A chairman committee. A house committee on security and intelligence. Mm. So he's tried to now mm. brought out the the the, 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 the best experience mm. he got in the National Assembly. Mm. And when he came on board, mm. he came up with that first initiative dialogue. Mm. It's in two ways. Carol and stick. Mm. That is the approach is to it. It's carol and st speech. Mm. Mm. Those who accepted to embrace fees and dialogue with the government, mm. the government will accept them. And those who refuse to accept dialogue, mm. the government will use military, serious military Absolutely. forces okay. against them to bring them Crush, down. Yeah. And that is what is happening now. Mm. So, and also, if you go in line with the Islamic injunction, mm. the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have entered into a treaty mm. with the unbelievers of Mecca. That is crash. You call it Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Mm. The treaty of the negotiation started in 628 AD and it was signed in 629 AD and effective in 630 AD and it was clearly spelled out four conditions that that year Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wanted to perform pilgrimage will not be allowed to perform pilgrimage in the holy city of Mecca he accepted it second one that whenever an unbeliever from 
Mecca mm. is migrating to Medina mm. to embrace Islam. Mm. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam should not allow him to embrace Islam unless he clear from his parents or his guardians. Mm -hmm. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mm. accepted that one in the treaty. Mm. And thirdly, also, mm. it was stated in the treaty that when also a, a, a Muslim mm. is going to Mecca to also embrace, uh, to be an un unbeliever, mm. then the Muslim mm. should not, the, the Prophet Muhammad should not stop him. He said he accepted it. Mm. And on the last leg of the, of the, of the agreement, mm. why he read Muhammad Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they say it should be removed. And Umar ibn Attar and Ali say no. And Abakar. Mm. But Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu accepted to move for peace to reign. Mm. And until that treaty, mm. which is a panel, mm. that the treaty is binding on Mecca, uh, on the on the Muhajirin that the Ansardi mm. and the and the, the and the, the Quraysh mm. for the period of ten years. Yeah. And it was there for mm. ten years, mm. and we have a lot of covenant. Even in Medina with Jew yeah. and Christianity and peace have reigned. Yes, you're talking about the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And uh, what is embedded in your own treaty with the bandits? What was the option? The option we have with bandits is mm. on record. Mm. The late president of the Pedophil of Nigeria, mm. of blessed memory, may sorry in rest in peace, mm. alleged Umaru Musa Adwa, mm. came out with a solution. How to stop milita militancy mm. in the Niger Maybe. Delta region? Mm. Niger Delta region is still part of this country, south south. Mm. So whatever a leader did, mm. some leaders can emulate it mm. for peace to reign. Mm. So he came out with the amnesty program. This jobless youth militant who are in the creek mm. decided to lay their arm and they were in integrated into society. Mm. Some of them were trained as pilots, mm. some were sent to school, some were trained as engineers. Mm. So the government now trying to, to borrow the leap of the late Musa Radwa mm. but coming out with this peace accord. Mm. Some of this planning, the government is trying to come out with the livestock development, that's breeding. Mm. He is trying to empower, economically empower them mm. through livestock breeding, mm. livestock timing. Mm. And he's trying to also send some of them back to school. Mm. So with the Ruta project he has now at hand, mm. is another also avenue mm. of solving this issue of banditry mm. and Fulani nomadism. Mm. Because in that Ruga is a very comprehensive tonky mm. project mm. where there's a veterinary clinic, mm. hospital, mm. dairy farm, mm. and, uh, grazing reserve, mm -hmm. houses, even some shops, mm. very um, a school, mm. mocks, mm. Islamia school, shops, minimat. Mm. All these are comprised mm. in that Ruga program. Mm. And he go, he's going to do it in all the three territorial districts. Mm. Let me remind you, uh, to refresh your memory, mm. the issue of Ruga project mm. started. was started or initiated by the federal government. But because of the attack, mm. mostly from the Benue State Governor, other yeah, yeah. people from the Southwest, the rejection, yeah. then the, the, the rejection was so mm. utterly mm. wide, yeah. wide. Okay. and the president decided to step down that policy, mm. and the governor now took over yeah. that idea mm. and go on with it, mm. and this is trying to yield a positive result. Right. Okay, you're talking about the, the uh, what, what the government is offering now as a carrot. Uh, what what was the not carrot? What, what as, as, yeah. Yes, yes, as, yeah, as, as, as a carrot. Yes, as a carrot. As a carrot. Okay, yes. so so right. what's what's the aspect of the the I mean the, the armed groups, the, the 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 bandits? What was their agreement? You know, during this uh, treaty or this accord? The 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 the, the feeling they have okay. that is at law and sake mm. are indiscriminately mm. killing them in the market, okay. and they are bona fide indigenous. Of Zampra state. They are not second class citizens of the state. Mm. They are born a pied indigent. Mm -hmm. Most of the armed bandit, 90% mm. of them mm. are indigent of Zampra. They are not foreigners. Mm. Pastoral communities, yes. Yes, they are pastoral communities. Mm. And most of these bandits, mm. some of some people who grew with them knew even their great great grandfather. Mm. I understand. Mm. 
So they are not second class. They are, it is, it's a sub -sub state. They are entitled to whatever a citizen is supposed to got in yeah. the government. Yeah. So the government now come on. Come, 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 up, yeah. come up with the with the, this uh, how yeah, to yeah, how to how to empower them mm -hmm. how to integrate them yeah. into the society and uh, it's a little, little result mm. some of them have gone back to school some of them have been going back to their businesses mm. in the market where i come from asian copy mm. today is a market the thursday you cannot see a single puller in, 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 in a cattle market mm. that is called before, Kana. before now before right? okay. you cannot see a puller and a woman selling milk no, no. Mm. In, in, in Shintapi. Mm. All these planning were, were in the... Shintapi. There is one, one, one vigilante, mm. vigilante leader mm. in Sake. A Marado local government. Mm. He killed seven, seven planners. He and alone. Cut, he alone. Mm. And he cut away with more than 3,000 uh, uh, livestock. Mm. And he's still, he's still, he's still, he's still living in Zamfara. Because he has been covered by some and that is present administration. He's in and, and the government failed to prosecute. He, 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 no, he killed people in the last administration. Mm. He was arrested mm. by this government, mm. but we don't know the, how the magic mm. they did and bring him out of the prison. And he's in one village called Gamji, in Gamji in Bakura, so, so the where the local government, the, mm. the village of the Poma commissioner mm. for local government and chieftaincy. So, so the government became helpless and allowed him to be, I mean, smuggled out of the court. Or how, how does it happen? You see, the problem, you know, the problem, you know, mm. there is even problem with judiciary is the issue of the dispensation mm. of the criminal justice. Sometimes, you know, there's some uh, probe, I would say, justice delay, De De justice delayed, yeah. denied. Mm. So, sometimes, because of the technicalities, mm. on the technicalities of the cases, mm. Some of these cases have been struck out or dismissed by court mm. on technical, not on the substance of the matter. Right. Okay, you, you're talking about, you know, still you're talking about what the government did. Uh, there's a um, uh, complaint that they've been killed, you know, uh, during market days. Uh, they, they, they talk about their cattle has been rustled and all of that. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. Are taking over and they are yeah, settlements. Yeah. And then the government came with its uh, own Ruga policy to accommodate them and to empower them. Mm. In return, I want to sit, I, I want to believe that they will also lay their arms. Yes, some lay, stop, yes, yes. They, they the lay their arms. That, that was yes. the reason why they yes, were they were given that amnesty, so to mm. speak. But the question is, has this make made the desired impact? Because if it is making the desired impact, we shouldn't have seen the return of this banditry and perhaps the kidnapping of, uh, I mean, the people of Zampara, including high profile kidnapping of school children. So. Is there any impact? Is government getting the value for uh, the negotiation it entered? It is getting serious value on it. Okay. Why I'm saying this is very simple. Mm. The, the, the responsibility of providing security of life and property mm. lies on the federal government. Mm. The president is the commander in chief armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He directed the Navy. Mm -hmm. Army, Air Force, Police, and all security agencies. Apparatus, right. Apparatus, yeah. the security architect of the country. And just like the governor also is a chief security officer of our state. But he doesn't have the power to direct commissioner of police or a uh, brigade, uh, what do you call it, uh, the command, uh, commander mm -hmm. of police. He don't give them directives. Mm -hmm. But he can but they work in synergy. Yeah, he can less with them he, and get he, what yes, they want. No, it's not possible. Okay. He cannot constitutionally mm -hmm. direct them to. Mm. Go and fire anybody. And you also have the votes because we're talking about he security. He has the votes. board. Look, he has the board. He's the chief security. Okay. And the custodian mm. of the lives and property of his citizens. Mm. He's also a chief executive mm. recognized by the constitution of Nigeria. Mm. Likewise, president and the local government, mm. Cham, who is democratically elected. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say, mm. the governor cannot direct, mm. put it on court, he mm -hmm. cannot direct army. Mm. Air Force, Navy, uh, what do you call it? Mm. Civil Defense, mm. Police, DSS, mm. to go and wage war mm. against armed bandits. Mm. This is the directive from the Mr. President. Mm. Just recently, Mr. President approved the deployment of mm. 6,000 mm. army to Zampara State. Mm. Just last few weeks, mm. the new service chiefs 
Yes, well, led by Irabo, look Irabo. Uh, that the chief of uh, defense staff. Yeah. Yes, led the other service chief to Zampara mm. to tell the good people of Zampara state mm. they are in Zampara to fight crime, crime and criminality, and to forge out the unbanded. Mm. To fight it to the last. To so fight it to the last. It to and the they last? are not there to fight mm. the peace lobbying people, but they are there to fight criminals. Okay. And they read a, 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 read a riot act mm. to the good people of the Empire State. Mm. And that time, also, the government used that opportunity mm. also to declare mm. that any bandit mm. who, is, who intended to embrace peace mm. within 60 days should surrender and embrace peace. After the expiration of 60 days, Window. there will be a total mm. war Minute. against them. Mm. And still, mm. within this grace of 60 days, mm. there are still serious mm. shelling mm. on this bandit in their major camps. Enclaves, okay. In this week, more mm. than 100 bandits were killed in their camps. Okay. Okay. Even though perhaps you didn't address the question, because the question, which, which, the question is. Why has the truce or the accord break or broke, so to speak? Because the accord has not broken. Let be... me tell you, the accord has not broken. Okay. The accord has not broken. Okay. So why this why bandit, did, why this bandit, let me let me tell you, in yeah. any segment of life, mm. that is good, bad, and ugly. Mm. The good one decided to embrace face. Mm. The bad one and uglies are still there, mm. launching terror. Launching rampage mm. you know, on the kidnapping, mm. or sooner or later, mm. the hammer, mm. the military forces will launch against them, mm. will, will deal with the matter. Well, so, so mm. this is the issue. Mm. This issue is beyond what anybody expected. It. These people have also sophisticated weapons, mm. more than even the Amori in Zampara State. Mm. You understand? Mm. And they're serious, mm. serious. Mm. Uh, sabotage mm. by okay. some even security agencies. Mm. Just last two weeks, mm. an army officer was arrested mm. okay. sending, uh, giving arms and ammunition and uniform through his girlfriend mm. to the, uh, to the, the bandit. bandit hideout. Mm. And also a police sergeant was arrested also mm. supplying arms and ammunition to the armed bandit camp. Mm. Just a few days ago, Another motorcycle dealer was arrested. Mm. Supply motorcycle this unbanded mm. hideout. He will buy the machines at the cost of 450 and sell 600. He supply not less than 200 motorcycles they used to do than the previous act. And also another one. Last week, again, a, 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 a patent medicine operator from Chicago local government was ar arrested with some people. He was selling hard drugs. Mm. Penta, Pentazone, Pentazone, what the Pentazone, Tramadol, and the rest. Mm. Just, you know, this, this, this uh, bandit did this criminality and under the influence of drugs. drugs. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I understand we have to take a break. Uh, I'd like to Sani Abdullahi Shinkafi, the one by Shinkafi, uh, a member of the Zampara State Committee for finding lasting solution to the issue of armed banditry. Uh, for giving us uh, insights on the efforts of the government, the state government, uh, to address this uh, existential problem. Uh, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll continue with the discussion. Please stay with us. Thank you. The Dung Uli the Garden Mist Chef's is name. Kowa Chemia Abar Marmarichi. Aishuru! 
Mr. Chef, may send your marmarangas key. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us on Dialogue. And today we're looking at uh, combating rural banditry in Zamfara State. And I have in the studio a large director, Sani Abdullahi Shinkapi, Wamban Shinkapi. He's also a member of the Zamfara State uh, Committee for finding lasting solution to armed banditry. He's also a honorary uh, special advisor to the governor on intergovernmental affairs. Uh, thank you once again for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Before the break, actually, we, you are talking about some of the challenges, you know, militating against the government effort to address this issue of banditry. You talked about sabotage on the part of security agencies, traditional institutions, and so on and so forth. You also talked about, you know, uh, the fact that the government is implementing, you know, religiously what it agreed, uh, I mean, what... what it has in terms of accord or in terms of uh, amnesty to the bandits, even though substantially, yes, there's decline, many will say, in terms of the rural banditry in Zamfara, but the resurgence is also of concern. Um, you didn't tell us, uh, even though you said there is a crack, you know, within the, the bandits, uh, perhaps that's what led to the kidnapping of those uh, students, students of Jengebi and so on. Um, I know that there is a committee report, you know, which was done by the former, a former IG, uh, MD Abu Bakr, you know, and, and all of that. Uh, but there has been concern in terms of implementing the recommendations of that report. Some say it is the reason why this rural banditry is still taking place. Because if you, you know, if the government has taken steps to prosecute those indicted, and to take the necessary steps, you know, to, to tackle this issue of sabotage and all of that, it would have reduced, you know, uh, to the barest minimum. What's your, what would be your reaction to this? Well, you see, on the issue of uh, the committee report, mm. the committee, the government has uh, accepted the report. Mm. And the governor, in his uh, acceptance speech of the report, he said no amount of punishment is mm. severe for any one pound wanting, aiding and abating and banditry in Zampar City. So when we submitted the report, mm. there is a lot of uh, intrigues trying to play out mm. on the side of the security, on mm. the side of the uh, what they call polit politicians, mm. and on the side of even traditional mm. institute. Mm. The governor now go on to constitute a commission, judicial commission of inquiry, to look into mm. the report as a technical, like technical committee. Mm -hmm. It's not whatever we recommended mm. that the government will act on it. Mm -hmm. So the government also have to invite all parties which were indicted by that report to substantiate their claims before now the government will now gazette the judicial committee of inquiry report. report. That's right. That is the procedural yeah, yeah. of uh, the report. Mm. So, and the government make a further, government and the government make mm. a further step mm. to constitute a commission of inquiry headed by a former judge from Kassina State and other uh, lawyers. When they are about to start the sitting, there is this COVID-19. Mm. And, and, and the, because of that COVID-19, mm. now the sitting was mm. adjoined mm. independently. Up mm. to now, they have not reconveyed. Mm. But the panel had been inaugurated. Mm. But they are yet to commence 
the exercise. Yes. That on the issue of the mm. report. Yes. On the issue of uh, this uh, sabotage, I have been saying now what currently happening. Yeah. Even the governor has been alleging in recent times the the, the activities of what he call you know uh, political opposition uh, political uh, figures now undermining the efforts you know to to address or to deal with the issue. He cited, you know, uh, an attempt by a group of politicians so to sabotage even the return or the rescue of the yes. school, which has generated a lot of controversy. Uh, so, so the, the, the former, the mm. repented bandits mm. are the one who helped mm. in reaching out to those criminal bandits who have not uh, accepted fees. Accord. And they use one of the one of the bandit leader, his grandfather, mm. to reach out to the bandit, because I, I have told, said I, they, are, they are indigenous, they are not second class citizens of the state. Mm. And when they go, they say they were offered mm. fifty-seven million, not release them. The politician will now decide at what period mm. they will release them. Mm. So when they had it they say okay if the governor will give us chance to come and accept the fees mm. it's better we give him this uh, students mm. and reject this so you want to say that uh, money did not exchange hand money have not exchanged hand not mm. even a dime mm. was so given they to just the gave them out voluntarily let me tell you mm. what happened even there's something that followed after even that jenge mm. that the release yes, of the 279 mm. girls one of the students mm. saw her father yeah. who was kidnapped mm. about three months ago mm. she saw him in that camp yeah. and she complained to the governor mm. he was kidnapped from one village called goram mm. in talata mapara local government the same way the avenue government used mm. and these Rescue people the were released mm. unconditionally 10 of them mm. including three infants mm. unconditionally and when they are about to go mm. the leader of the band stopped them mm. and said he has a message to give to them to the student when you go back to school mm. greet you are watching my boss <laughs> when you go back to school, mm. greet your mate transfers. And the funny thing about this thing, mm. the proximity of the school gate mm. and the military checkpoint mm. is not up to 500 meters. Mm. So, and they came directly to the gate. So you are alleging compromise on the part of you the school authorities. I'm, I'm, I'm and telling you, the there's negligence agents. of duty. Mm. There's negligence of duty. Maybe they are, they have they have abandoned their duty first. Okay, at the point of at the, the point of that at the one a.m. Incident. when they came, mm. and why we have even mm. trying to mm. suspect mm. that politicians are play are playing politics mm. with the lives of our people because of two thousand and twenty three election, mm. because there is one notorious bandit mm. called Awolu Doda, mm. who is the kingpin. Mm of mm. who kidnapped Ankara student mm. in Kassana State. Mm. That Awal Dodawa mm. decided to lay his arms. Mm. He lay over 24 AK pods with heavy arms and a major and rocket launcher mm. and a, a what do you call it a magazine machine gun. Mm. Machine gun. Mm. It was a, a heavy jubilation and standing ovation when he did it. Mm -hmm. People are very happy seeing a notorious bandit mm. who has a camp in Dumburum mm. and Giren Jaja lay his arm. Mm. Very big forest. Mm. Dumburum and Giren Jaja. Mm. From that forest, you can go to Cameroon, Chadi, mm. Dipa. Mm. But he laid his arm because somebody, the sole administrator of Jibia, told him that 800 million was was uh, mm. was uh, was 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 was, was drawn yes, uh, for that purpose but ransom. only 30 million was given to as a ransom mm. he said okay now he come to realize he's not he's not a thief mm. 
Et des hommes qui ont pris 770 et qui ont pris 30 millions. Et c'est ce qui fait qu'il vienne à revenir et à surrender et à accepter la ministre du gouvernement. Et c'est aussi un des notoires et des bandits de la vie de la vie appelé Mohamed Zakwai. Il est le fils de l'élite de Bouhari Ndaji, le leader de Zamparawa Group of Ambandi. Vous savez qu'ils sont venus. Dans Kansanawa et dans Zamparawa. Et vous savez tout ça Vous savez tout ça Oui, parce que je suis dans le comité. Nous interagissons avec les Poulanis, les Ardo. Vous savez, nous avons rencontré beaucoup de... Je n'ai pas rencontré avec les bandits. But I've met with the, 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 leadership, uh, yeah. the leadership of the Pula Met Allah mm. and Ardu and security agencies who have been hearing about it. Mm. You understand? Mm. So, so so they met. Mm. That Zakwai mm. also lay his arms. Mm. A lot of AK Putin support with the rocket launcher. Mm. With the, it is a lot of heavy. He mm. begged the governor yes. that he want to come back mm. and go back to school. Mm. Why he joined Ambandi 3? It's not only for him to be taken ransom, but to take a revenge because of his father was killed by some group of bandits. And because of that sources, which was recorded, some people acting behind the scene who are abuse of that achievement are now within five hours of that achievement. This kidnap, this uh, Jane Gabe girls were kidnapped to rubbish the governor and blackmail him because of the mischievous so so in, in this you are alleging you know multiple involvement in in terms of the security agencies in terms of the uh, perhaps politicians and so on and so forth and the panel of the mm. panel of the security agencies mm. on this issue if you look at it it is not it is not in zampara state where mm. this student were kidnapped they were kidnapped in chibok mm. in Dabchi in Kagara, mm. in Kankara, and followed by Zampara, Jengebe. Mm. And now, now, now another one in forest, forestry. forestry, school of forestry, yeah. in, Kadu, in Kaduna. Right. So this is, and also even Turkish, Turkish international school, yeah, an, attempt to, an attempt by Ambandi to mm. come and, and, and ramsack terror mm. on them. Mm. And it was okay. repelled by the military. Mm. So this is how you are, what do I want to call on the Nigerians? Mm. Let us critically look at the security challenges we are having at hand. The issue of security challenges is cut across the cis geopolitical zone, yeah. and they have their peculiarity yes. in all parts of the country. Okay, okay, we're talking about measures taken. Yeah, but it seems that from your explanation that there is no proper synergy between the state government and the federal government. Yeah. We're operating at different purposes, at different levels, mm -hmm. uh, except for the recent visit of the service chiefs who, you know, reassured uh, they have shown of the confidence mm -hmm. and, and reports, uh, the confidence of the people in, in, the, in the military forces. Uh, but there have been measures that have been taken in recent times, you know, especially from the federal government, by the federal government. The banning of mining, you know, illegal or artisanal mining in Zamfara, uh, came to effect, even though it was pronounced some time ago, but it was reinforced by the federal government. Again, it has imposed a no-ply zone, you know, to the state, all in the aim of uh, ensuring that, uh, you know, uh, it address some of this concern. But it appears the government, the state government, is not at home or is not keen into this initiative. Why? Well, you see, when I always heard about this no-ply zone, I always laugh. Mm -hmm. The simple reason is the federal government has an agency called NAMA. It's a clear indication that the Ministry of Aviation and NAMA and even PAN have failed in their constitutional responsibilities as an agency which actually regulate the airspace management of Nigeria. So it is very unfortunate if an aircraft can cross, even a helicopter can cross an airspace of a country, Nigeria, that has gained independence for over 60 years. And without this being detected. Uh, being detected. And it shows a total failure on the part of security gathering. On the part of security, intelligence, intelligence gathering, right. and for not taking proactive step mm. to curtail 
the plane of uh, mm. aircraft which are not being permitted to fly mm. in the Nigeria airspace. Mm. And it has exposed the incompetency, mm. incapability, mm. inefficiency of the Office of National Security Advisor. That he has failed his responsibility as a National Security Advisor, not at the Biden president properly. Before you declare a no ply zone, mm. or less if there's a war in a country, mm. and it is under military piat mm. that you will declare mm. a, a no ply zone. Mm. A no, a, a, why I always laugh? Mm. We don't have even a small airstrip. Mm. We don't have air force. Mm. All in the northwest, northwestern zone. It is only well, the we're, para. we're talking about flying of choppers, helicopters that doesn't require. Let, let me tell you, the choppers, mm. they what they are alleging, mm. that these choppers mm. go and drop arms and to gold. It is very unfortunate. I am mm. calling on the National Assembly and also Mr. President mm. to issue an executive order to regulate mm. the use of social media and cyber crime in Nigeria. This social media are disastrous to the unity and coexistence of this country and even economic development of this country. Mm. This chopper is saying it was trending on the social media network. Mm. There is an aircraft in a Guatemala Bay mm. in the Central America which share boundary with Mexico, mm. where a 16 carrier mm. aircraft landed in a porous of the run runway. Mm. And when it was reported by the community in that place, and it was found out that aircraft is carrying arms and cocaine. System bill of cocaine in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. And now this is the this is the air aircraft. Mm -hmm. They are parading mischievously to rubbish the governor of Zampar State. Even to we call for declaration of state of Nigeria. Yeah, even though they are taking cognizance mm -hmm. of the provision of the Constitution of Nigeria, Section 305 of Nigeria. Yeah, even though the allegation of using choppers or whatever to supply arms and drugs, it's not just peculiar or limited to Zamfara. <laughs> there has been several allegations along along that line. You know, uh, uh, there has been there have been such complaints in in Benungwari forest and all of that where people will say they cited you know aircraft and all of that but then coming back to uh, the responsibility of the government uh, there has been concerns that uh, the Zamfara state government or the governor in particular uh, has not shown enough commitment you know to expose you know people who are behind all of this uh, if he has the intelligence and the knowledge of who they are uh, certain groups of people are even contemplating taking him, you know, to uh, mm -hmm. the other, you know, the international uh, organizations like the, I mean, the ICC, like, I mean, getting the international uh, part, I mean, the, the uh, uh, European countries, you know, foreign countries to, to, to give him, I mean, to not to issue him with visa to go out of the country until he exposed those behind this. Even the Area Consultative Forum has... Uh, demanded for the same. Why is um, how are you looking at some of the streets? Or oh, if you look at those uh, coming to this studio to be talking about banning visa to the governor, mm. they are not uh, they are not uh, cognizant with the visa procedure in the other country. Mm. That's one. And secondly, mm. where are they from 2011 to 2019 when this unbanded? took over almost for the local government in the upper state. Launching, launching rampage. Mm -hmm. Blood was flowing, splitting, kidnapping, cattle rustling, mm -hmm. and bandit therapy. Where are they? More than 2.8 billion years was spent as a ransom. Where are they? So they are too economical with the truth, they are too sentimental, and they are card carrying member of the immediate past government. So what I'm trying to say, I have been saying, let me repeat again, stop, we should stop playing politics with the lives of Nigerians. Mm. This is pure politics. But is it wrong to let me, the, the governor, the mm. governor have made a categorical statement. Mm -hmm. He, a, a, an, an emir mm. of Maru mm. was dethroned. Mm. And when, when the government was about to take him to court, he took government to court. Mm. So because the government doesn't want a abuse of court process mm. and decided to stand down the suit the government will file against him and go on with his suit. Mm. 
and also an and also a a, 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 a district head was removed along with him was removed along with him and as i was said earlier there is a circumstantial evidence why you can link these people with these things even if you are taking up empowerment how to integrate this bandit how to do this how to do that when he come on board the previous administration have never handed over even single cobble but it left a, 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 a liability a debit a liability debt mm. of over 400 billion era most of the money that come from federation account mm. from the a local government joint account from the Faris Club, bail out, agricultural support program, as, as a small and media enterprise program, all this money were looted silly by the previous administration. And we have series of petition, EFCC, and EFCC refused, Magu refused on the line on court. Magu refused mm. to direct the arraignment mm. of those treasury looters in Zamfara State. Mm. How can you go on? When you say you want to empower, where do you have money to 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 look to, to finance the empowerment mm -hmm. and this that's it that's the re reality of, of it oh, okay and and poverty mm -hmm. is in kanka mm -hmm. in the state mm -hmm. economic activities why everything should, why, why in the previous the administration of, yeah. but now we have bounced back okay bouncing back now uh, <laughs> taking people out of poverty and addressing insecurity okay yeah. thank you very much Alaji dr sunny and lahi shinkafi one bench shinkafi for talking to us on dialogue uh, we appreciate your insights on the efforts to combat banditry uh, in Zamfara and, of course, uh, uh, guarantee you know, peaceful coexistence and stability in that state. Thank you once again. Thank you. So on his behalf and the technical crew, my name is Shafir Suleiman. Have yourself a wonderful weekend ahead.